Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as we're now going to be talking about yesterday's Super Bowl matchup between the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers in which the Chiefs were able to remain undefeated. Now, I believe with the Vikings losing, the last remaining undefeated team to start off the year as they win 28-18 in San Francisco This was a weird game. It was a very weird game based off of some of the injuries that occurred, obviously, leading up to this game. And then the 49ers as well. They end up losing Debo and Ayuk during the game. Ayuk now out for the season, it appears. I don't know if we've gotten confirmations this morning, but... The fear was that he had a torn ACL. It sounds like he's going to be out for the entire season. And I guess we'll start with the 49ers here because the Chiefs, as we know, the Chiefs, have they looked perfect up to this point? Certainly not, but they are going to continue to be a competitive team week in, week out. And just for whatever it's worth, I understand Mahomes is not having a good year, but he is he and that defense as well deserves a ton of credit. But again, I want I do want to focus on the 49ers here momentarily at least because this does feel like things are starting to get out of hand for the Niners. And I have had a lot of faith. I've remained with them through all the injuries that they've be, been dealing with up to this point in the season and My thought process is that if they can escape out of this onslaught of injuries with a 500-ish record, that they would be just fine because they are still talented enough on paper to be able to, you know, show up in the big moments in the playoffs. Eventually, they're going to get the likes of Dre Greenlaw back, hopefully Christian McCaffrey back, and that these will be additions for them more than anything And unfortunately, the injury bug just refuses to quit with San Francisco. So I'll start with Brock Purdy because I feel like this is going to be a game that a lot of people point to when the season comes to an end. If it does go poorly for the 49ers, where people are going to look at Purdy and say, oh, well, look what he look how much he struggled in the moments where he didn't have his best players, which is 100 percent fair. In terms of, he looked bad yesterday. 17 of 31, 212 passing yards, three interceptions, a couple interceptions in the red zone. No good whatsoever. This was one of the worst games that we've seen from Brock Purdy. I think that it's an interesting thing, though, when you look at a game like this, and a lot of people, like I mentioned, are going to say, well, look what Brock Purdy looked like when he didn't have his stars. I don't think it's necessarily about being starless. I think it's about being without starting caliber wide receivers. And obviously, you know, once you pay the quarterback, it becomes much more difficult to be able to surround him with sufficient talent where they're not going to be able to hold on to as many star players as they have these past couple years with Debo, Ayuk, George Kittle, all of these guys together. But I, I do think that there has to be some sort of you know, margin for error when you're in the middle of a game and you start having to throw to, I don't want to call them nobodies, they're in the NFL, but you're on, I think they highlighted themselves something like 5th, 6th, 7th wide receivers that were out there playing with Brock Purdy. This was a very bad game. And Tom Brady kind of critical of him during the game, which was interesting, obviously, because of, you know, there was so much being made of what Brady was going to be able to say from a broadcasting booth, given his new rules as the Raiders minority owner. Don't want to go down that whole path right now. But, I mean, Brady, still a little bit objective here in the booth, which I do like. But, that being said, I don't think this game has to be made into some sort of a statement on who Brock Purdy is as a quarterback and whether or not he deserves to get paid because of a game like this. I think that that feels very overreactionary, at least in my opinion. The fact that, sorry, he wasn't able to, you know, make magic happen with Jacob Cowing, Cowing or Ronnie Bell and Chris Conley. This is more of a statement on the 49ers as a whole right now. And 
ultimately, I'm the, I'm certainly not writing them off at this point because it's way too early in the year. They do still have some of those superstar playmakers, like I mentioned, like McCaffrey and Greenlaw, that are eventually going to come back. And nobody in that division ne- necessarily looks stellar right now. Huge win for the Seahawks this past weekend as well, being able to take it to the Falcons. I also have been pretty vocal that I think that the entire NFC South is not good. So, you know, great win for the Seahawks. Definitely don't need to take, don't want to take anything away from them. I think they understand there are pretty clear areas of improvement as well. An offensive line for Seattle, still a bit shaky, still need to get healthier on defense. Seahawks certainly are capable of rivaling the 49ers for this division title, but I think it's going to be a very close, you know, race down the stretch here. And I do think that the 49ers are ultimately going to be okay in terms of winning their division and being in the playoffs. It's going to be a matter of how healthy are they, are they going to be when we eventually get there. But on the other side of this, for the Chiefs, I suppose, as well. And I guess even before we move that, kind of tying these two things together is... I understand there's a lot of excuses for the 49ers with these injuries. And again, I just made the excuses myself in terms of Brock Purdy. But for the 49ers, this feels like a game where they kind of had to win this game in terms of being able to get that monkey off of their back with the Chiefs, you know, staring them down, being able to have their number over the course of these past few years and... You know, I don't want to say that because they couldn't win a regular season game in late October, that if things came down to a Super Bowl push, that the 49ers wouldn't be able to do so. It just feels like they they kind of shrink a little bit in some of these instances. And I think that Shanahan is an excellent coach. Um, a lot of people critical of him because of one of these weird things that we do in sports where when you're knocking at the door and you can't get the job done, somehow that makes you a worse coach than or just player in general than when you're out of the spotlight because you're never in it. I think the 49ers have been on the wrong end of that, that they've faced a lot of criticism as the result of not being able to beat the Chiefs in these past couple, couple Super Bowls. But that being said... Eventually, they are going to need to look themselves in the mirrors and, you know, ask what what is getting in our way here? Because, you know, running out of excuses, I feel like the longer this goes on. But on the Chiefs side of this as well, I mean, this was not a pretty game. And Patrick Mahomes has continued to really struggle up to this point in the season. Six passing touchdowns to eight interceptions. Certainly not the season that we were expecting out of Mahomes, especially considering the fact that you have, it seems like, an improved receiving core from last season, where Xavier Worthy, obviously Rasheed Rice for when he was in the picture, um, the running game this year was supposed to be more of a support as well, and I do think that the running game has been pretty great for them up to this point in the season yesterday rushed for 184 yards on the ground with four rushing touchdowns now a little McCole Hardman trick play in there to get one of those touchdowns Mahomes himself had to do it for what ultimately was a pretty awesome touchdown of him running over 49ers rookie defensive back Malik Mustafa but Malik Mustafa I think actually is how you pronounce it but um You know, Mahomes also had that cheeky play on the sideline as well, where it's like, oh, he's going to step out, and then he sort of jukes back in and picks up an extra, you know, 10, 15 yards, which a lot of NFL fans were mad about, understandably. All of this to be said, the run game has been good for them, and it's been a huge crutch, but Mahomes has really struggled, and it's not something that I'm going to overreact about by any means. I mean, he is still Patrick Mahomes. I don't think that he's a worse quarterback from a talent perspective from where he was at last year to this year. The Chiefs are still 6-0, and so it's at least good enough to, you know, not warrant any major overreactions. But that being said, you know, if some of these roles were reversed, then I think you can make a great argument, truthfully, that Brock Purdy has had you know, at least an equivalent season to Patrick Mahomes. I mean, Purdy is second in the league in passing yards. He has more touchdowns and less interceptions that, you know, this, if the roles were reversed here, Mahomes would be under heavy fire. And I'm definitely not advocating for that because I still think that he's great. But 
he's kind of skating his way through the first half of the season and what has been pretty ugly for him. And I just wonder what is it from the Chiefs that are go- they're going to be able to magically unlock now moving forward. I think that Rasheed Rice would have been massively important for him. A lot of these Mahomes interceptions, of course, came before even you know Rice went down. Rice even went down on a Patrick Mahomes interception. So, you know, I... It's just such a weird situation where I'm not sure where things are going to change ultimately for this Chiefs offense moving forward. Now, Travis Kelsey, I think that he's still very capable. If there was any lock yesterday, it was that the 49ers weren't going to let Travis Kelsey run all over them. That, I'm sure, was the number one talking point defensively from the entire week. Maybe it should have been as well about not letting Patrick Mahomes get outside of the pocket. That's sort of a different conversation as well, even though Mahomes, when he's like up around that line of scrimmage, is an enigma because is he going to... like He had one of those little flip passes. I forget exactly to, for who it was to exactly, but you know, Mahomes, he has those flip passes. He can hit you downfield. He'll run. Again, there's no easy solution for that, but you know, all of this to be said, I do think that the Chiefs ultimately are going to need to make some sort of a move, even if it is marginal. I'm not expecting them to go out and get some sort of a superstar. The whole Devontae Adams situation never really added up to me in terms of who the Chiefs could go make a push for. And, you know, what part what makes part of this whole conversation about what kind of weapon can the Chiefs go get even more difficult is the fact that I find it really hard to believe that any team that even has an inkling of being a being a threat in the next couple of years is going to trade with the Chiefs and give them one of their best weapons. And I know. I I don't even really know who the option would be. I guess you would have to look in the NFC and maybe it's a Deontay Johnson off of the Panthers where they don't all the reporting has been they don't plan to trade him, but maybe it's someone like Deontay Johnson. I mean, maybe it's the Rams making a desperation move if this season continues to unravel for them. I don't see that being the case. I think the Cardinals probably have a couple wide receivers that could, you know, hold some sort of a marginal role for the Chiefs, but I don't know. I think they need something. And I, I don't have all the answers at this current moment, but the lack of dynamic ability from this passing offense, once again, is a concern. Luckily, on the other end, their defense really has not missed a beat from how excellent they were last season, and that's continued into this year. And, you know, they're 6-0, and despite not playing good football, where you could look at it from two perspectives. Are the Chiefs frauds, or is that extra scary because the Chiefs still haven't figured it out and they're able to pull out these wins? So spin the narrative whichever way you like. Chiefs are 6-0. and They seem to be, you know off and running here in the best situation moving forward for the season. Debatably. I, I don't know if I'd quite go that far, but you know, Chiefs are good still. Um, there's no denying that. Even if you do want to talk about refs and how much they have looked lackluster, Mahomes' interceptions, all of those things, they are still the Chiefs. They're one of the best rosters, probably the best coach team in the NFL. They're not going anywhere. But let me know what your thoughts are from this game in the comment section. We're now going to be diving into what were some of two of the, I think, the most fun games in the NFL yesterday. We're going to be starting off with the interdivisional matchup between the Detroit Lions and the Minnesota Vikings as the Lions were able to come out on top in what was a little bit of a shootout. Ultimately, they win this game 31-29 to to take full control over the NFC North, handing the Vikings their first loss. So we're going to be diving into this game, but before we do so, we are going to take a quick break. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back. 